So um, today I want to go over uh, uh, how uh, kind of a tricky thing that happens in loops when you're maybe um, doing some event attaching uh, or attaching event listeners. Um, and the first thing we'll need to look at, I think we've looked at this before, but just in case, are immediately invoked functions or self-calling functions. That's sort of the general look of these. And if we break these down like this, we can see what do we start with. Well, we have these uh, parentheses here, and this is just a, an anonymous function. And if we bunch these up, we can see that, well, we've wrapped the anonymous function in parentheses. So that turns it into an expression. And then we simply just call it. So these two uh, parentheses here are the in function invocation operator. And it's really that simple, but it looks pretty convoluted. Um, and sometimes you'll see the um, <clears throat> the parentheses can be put in here as well. So with that out of the way, well, let's just log something that works. Okay, and we'll open this up in a browser. And I did something here, 24. I didn't need that <clears throat> semicolon. Put it in an input. Actually, I did not have the closing parentheses. Okay, sorry about that. So now let's look at this tricky situation with um, looping through DOM elements. Uh, let's create some div one, and we'll just do a two and three. And let's um, <clears throat> let's say we want to add a click handler to each one, and so uh, we first need to get these elements. So we'll say divs equals document get elements by tag name, and those are divs. So now divs has uh, all of our <clears throat> divs. And now if we want to say, if we want to loop through those, we'll say um, the length here. We want to capture the length here. And then we'll just simply say, well, i, well, our counter is less than the length of divs, increment i. And now here we'll access, we'll be able to access each one of these divs by its index, right? And then we'll say <clears throat> add event listener. Um, and we'll add the click event. Then we just need an anonymous function and we'll just log out um, div uh, the div which div was clicked. Okay. And so this code here is simply adding this uh, anonymous function handler um, for click events. Okay, so now I think we can just run that and have a look. So div3 got clicked, div3 got clicked. What's going on here? Well, let's do some more inspection. Console log i. And we'll console log i. We can see i out here too, right? And if we comment this out, you'll see that within the loop, it's 0, 1, 2. And then outside of the loop, it was 3. We commented that out. So let's look at our loop construct. So we start at 0, <coughs> and we say, well, i is less than length. Well, the length of these are 3. That's 1, 2, 3. Um, and so what will happen is um, first it'll be 0, and then we'll increment it. It'll be 1. We'll say it's 1 less than 2. Yeah. And now go in here, it'll increment it, and uh, eventually um, it's going to increment it. Uh, I'm sorry, 
I said one is less than two. It's one is less than three. Yes, it'll it'll go through here. It'll increment to two. Two is less than three. It goes through here. Eventually, it's going to increment this to three, and then it's going to say, "Well, is three less than three? No." And then we exit, and that's why this guy is now three. But that tells us sort of the answer to what's going on. Since this is just a closure, right here, this anonymous function, it's a closure, this i gets closed over, meaning that i, um, the closure, this anonymous function, any of its variables, and in this case we're looking at i, has visibility to any changes of that variable outside uh, in the outer scope. And right now the outer scope is just the global scope. <clears throat> we don't really have this in an outer function, but i is still changing, and by the time it gets out here, i is turned into 3. So all of these event listeners, because they're because of closure, are going to have 3 when we click on them. So that's the why. What's the solution to this problem? Well, looking at uh, this nice book that I'm studying, Secrets of the JavaScript Ninja, and I'm sure plenty of places on the internet, there's a nice solution using that immediately self-calling uh, function expression, immediately invoked function expression. <laughs> and so if we go back to looking at how that worked, it looked something like that, right? Well, let's take all of this, stick it in there, indent it, take this log out. So now we still have the same loop on the outside, right? And we're looping with i. But the trick we can do is we can pass into our anonymous, uh, our self-calling um, function, the value of i, but stuff it into a different variable, let's call it x, and just go in and replace these with x. And this will now work because x is no longer uh, this live variable that's well, it's a live variable. If, if there was another x changing, it would see that too. But it's no longer going to be affected by i changing. So if we save that and reload, now we can see that, uh, well, I should probably rename these. Because we're zero indexed, right? OK. Or we could fix that by incrementing it by 1. But you get the point, right? So now it's working. So that's an interesting little tidbit using uh, immediately invoked uh, function expressions to solve an issue with closure scope on a loop. Uh, interesting problem and probably worth coding up yourself and having a look.